In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, it's goodbye Skoda and hello something else. Yes, it is time for the Skoda to move to a new home. And um, I even spent some time yesterday carefully cleaning. I didn't clean it very much or very well, but I did um, vacuum it out. So the interior is now far more pleasant than it was. Look, I'm even leaving the Haynes manual in. No point in me having a Haynes manual anymore. But um, yeah, I'm taking it to its new home in Yorkshire today. And um, yeah, I'm very pleased to report I've sold it for more than I paid for it. So the hard work has paid off. You know, there's uh, days of polishing and it still looks awful, but better. And um, the rust proofing, uh, the servicing, um, so yeah, I bought a car, improved it, and sold it for more money. So that's very, very pleasing. Um, I've got one last drive, and um, I shall talk through what it's been like to own the Skoda once we get on the way. Here we go then. Look, look, actually clean. Actually vacuumed. I should have done that earlier. It feels like a different car in here. And it's definitely the only time I've sold a car with less miles than when I picked it up. Um, it did have about 8,000 miles on it, I think, before I started playing around with odometers. There we go. Right. Onwards. So I think some of you have been a bit surprised that the Skoda's um, time on the fleet hasn't been longer. And uh, some of you even thought it would be a keeper. Big mistake. Very few cars uh, are keepers on the Hubnut fleet. And the simple reason is there are always more cars I want to own. But in truth, I can't say I've really fallen in love with a Favorite. Uh, there's a lot to like. I admire how much it achieves through sheer simplicity. You know, there's no power steering. There's, apart from the fuel injection, there's very little in the way of electronics and it is just a decent car you can jump in drive it anywhere you like it's comfortable apart from the lack of anywhere to put my left foot and um, yeah it's, it's not noisy it handles well enough I wouldn't say it's an entertaining drive but um, yeah you don't have to worry about bends it, it's always going to go around them unless you drive like a complete idiot and the lack of anti-roll bars does tend to discourage you from driving too idiotically so it's not necessarily fun to drive but not everyone wants fun if you just want a car just for getting about minimum hassle the, there is so much to recommend these these cars and uh, it's a shame i would have loved to have done a head-to-head -head comparison with a lada samara which uh, i don't think the lada samara would feel so capable and feel so good um, both cheap cars, both very much of the um, Soviet era, but um, yeah, worlds apart in execution. A bit more power would be nice. It may be a 67 brake horsepower engine, but um, it often feels a bit gutless. But really, its main failing is that it, it is so capable. Oh, hello, Starlet. Oh dear, front wheel start issues on the Starlet. It um, must be having the brakes looked at. But that's where it lives now. But yeah, the, the, the biggest fault with this car is it just does everything a bit too well. And um, yeah, and because it does things so well, you, you start to begrudge things like the chatter from the overhead valve engine. It intrudes on what's otherwise a very peaceful driving experience. And I must admit, living where I do, I do want something that offers a bit more in the handling department. Although I suspect, knowing what I'm purchasing later, that will come at the cost of ride comfort. But um, more about that once we get it famous um, acceleration spot. Sixty. Do 
it's, it's not bad if you work it hard. The problem is that you have to work it hard. It's got a reasonable spread of torque. It does drop off very badly below two and a half thousand revs. Kind of expect a bit more low down grunt. It's a bit weird. It's almost like driving a diesel, really. You just keep the revs below 3,000 revs and it's quite pleasant and not necessarily very rapid. Reminds me a lot of a BX non turbo diesel. Anyway, I shall um, keep my foot down and head to Yorkshire. One thing I do need to discuss, um, just as we enjoyed the Newtown Bypass again, is um, the Crown rust proofing, because um, this car had an MOT yesterday, which thankfully it passed. Um, it was an initial fail for headlamp uh, adjustment, but he tweaked that on the test, so therefore we got the pass. But, um, what was I say? Oh yeah, the Crown rust proofing, complete nightmare for an MOT tester, because the entire underside of the car looks wet because of the wax treatment and um, he did the dampers and so the testers going well is that damper misting or is it just the wax so it makes life very difficult for a tester I could see you getting an inadvertent fail if you didn't tell them that you got this wax treatment in place so um, and it genuinely makes it quite hard to spot leaks um, I mean, there are a couple of leaks. There's a very small leak in the engine bay um, from oil, and I think possibly water somewhere as well. And um, it's very difficult to try and trace them because everywhere is slightly damp. So I'm just saying, well, I'm glad I did it because it will protect this car. Uh, I can also see some downsides there. Giant Airbus there to the um, left-hand side at the moment, just behind the trees. Famous blimp, or beluga, I think they call it. Remarkable. Right, so we're currently um, in Rochdale, I think, and that is the owner in front of us, or the new owner of the Skoda, uh, with a smiley face transit van. Uh, appears to be some sort of camper. Um, I think that's a good sign. if someone's prepared to spend you know i mean it's clearly had a fair bit of money spent on it that van um yeah i, I think that can only be a good thing for the future of this little skoda just having a nose around a shed having dropped the skoda off Some very interesting stuff about Heavy engineering. 1870s. This went to Australia in 1911, I think they said. It was used to power a sheep shearing outfit. Marvellous. Yeah. Oh. We are now travelling through Todd Morden. Um, I'm very kindly being given a lift by the by Sean, who's purchased the Skoda. And uh, we are travelling in a smiley face transit van. Look at the retro stereo goodness. I've been in a transit van for many a year, so this is very exciting. But yeah, very pretty towns everywhere up here. And we're now, yeah, making our way to Southport to collect my new car, which is all, also very exciting. Look at this, what a day for it, eh? Right, we have arrived. And no, it isn't a Yaris. It is a Mazda 323F. In um, slightly careworn condition. Oh yes. 
actual hole. Brilliant. Let's see if anyone's in. I won't have to worry about polishing this one. I've just checked the fluids, that's all good. Um, oh, I just managed to lock the steering wheel. There we go. That's a very Japanese idol. Hmm, is that smoke at the back? Where we just... No, it just smells fuely. Oh gosh, that's low down. Can we just see in the front? Oh yes, ooh, there we go, we're up. Atlantic 252. I don't think we need the heater on, but... Um, that works. That's good. Oh, you, you'll notice... Oh, bang. We've got frameless doors as well, my favourite. Um, yeah, it's a bit scruffy in here, but look, we've got cubby holes in places. We've got pat patina. Pat pat patina. Hoping that idol's going to come down. Uh, we've got stalks the Japanese way around, so that's always good. Oh dear, I think we must have some blade sizing issues. Look, we've got a bit of the old um, triangle going on there. Triangle of fail. And. Um, Given recent Skoda experiences, oh, we don't seem to have any rear wash. But we do have rear wiper, so that's something. There we go. But the idle is slowly starting to come down a bit, so that's encouraging. But yeah, we got um, central locking. That all works. Good stuff. Right, I, I've just done the live broadcast where I've just um, revealed my new car for the first time and how it isn't driving very well. The problem is easily found. Look. That bellows is completely knackered and that's letting in too much air whereas these devices are reading the air so the, the engine's getting too much air, so um, I think I might have some insulation tape. I might have to see if I can fix that before I can even drive home. Right, I've returned to the vendor and managed to um, acquire some aluminium tape, my favourite friend. So we shall see if that has made any difference. We shall probably need the key, I would suggest. <laughs> Well, that has settled down to a better idle much more quickly. Uh, just need to screw these back on before I forget. Of course, I've got no tools with me, so that makes this all the more fun. But hopefully that will hold or at least improve matters until we're home. I mean, it's split there as well, but I think this will hold it in place sufficiently. We'll have to get a new one of these hoses. But yes, that'd certainly do it if it's leaking air. So we shall have a quick test drive and see if that has improved matters. Right, moment of truth. Ah, beautiful. We have fixed the problem. Oh, that's a relief given I've got to drive about 140 miles back home. Here we go then, let's see if we can actually get home. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, there you go. Isn't it reassuring when something is um, an easy fix uh, that costs zero pounds until I have to buy a new hose? And then I'll find out what parts availability is like. But all this is way ahead. Uh, nice rattly heat shield there. For now, I just want to get home. So we shall see how the journey unfolds. With plenty of sunshine by the look of it. Oh, better do my commercial bit. Took t-shirts, still available at hubnut.org along with took mugs, different mugs, different t-shirts. Sadly the poor favourite never got its t-shirt. Was that a drip? That is a drip. <coughs> ah. The sunroof may be sealed up, but it's still leaking. That, that's going to be fun in Wales, isn't it? Oh. Oh dearie, dearie me. Oh well. Thankfully it's leaking onto the passenger seat and not my seat. Right, I need to fire up my sat-nav, so you must go away. Bloody hell. <laughs> the sat-nav has brought me down a friggin' off-road track. This is horrific. I can't believe this road surface exists. I've already heard one massive bang from the underside of the car. Hopefully, whatever it is, wasn't serious. Oh. Deary me. Uh, perhaps trying to drive home at rush hour was not the brightest idea. But we're, we're actually on a proper road now with an actual road surface and not craters. I don't think that the um, phone was really capturing just how horrific that little section was. Um, we've got a CV joint going. Uh, I think it might be the near side, so on the tight left turn I can hear it going clack, 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 clack. Very, very quietly. Um, and uh, the sunroof is still merrily dripping away. And, um, yeah. It's a lemon, I think, but um, hopefully a lemon will get me home. Hopefully it's not as bad as the old um, Daimler, uh, but frankly, it'd have to be pretty bad to be worse than that. Uh, I'm starting to wish I bought some cassettes with me, but never mind. Well, we're up to 70 now, um, just over 3,000 revs. It is a fair bit more peaceful than the Favorite, I will concede. Um, I mean, the Favorite and this car were made in the same year, and um, yeah, this feels very Japanese, very tight, very firm, the seats are firm, the suspension is firm, but um, very sweet handling and a very slight trace of wheel wobble at this speed, so I suspect there's a balance issue. A bit of a roar going on, which I think is probably just crap tyres rather than um, a wheel bearing, but I shall monitor that situation. I've already managed to turn the wipers on instead of indicating once. So, um, some re-education of myself to go on there. But, um, yeah, so far not bad. Occasionally get dripped on by the leaky sunroof. But, um, I think I'll be taping that one up when I get home. Nine miles covered so far. Ugh, like the sun is shining out of my backside. really is, um, a fine way to travel. I've just bought a car for £200 and I'm now driving down the motorway at motorway speeds in it. I'm not sure about the driver's seat yet, but I've got a lot of experimenting to do with um, the various settings, and there are many, and I think I can do with dropping the steering wheel very slightly in height. Which I'm sure you can do because Japanese tend to go in for that sort of thing. But yeah, it may, may be scruffy as hell, um, but um, I'm liking this so far. This, this mirror is wobbling a bit, I suspect it's had a few impacts in its time and uh, is making um, checking when it's safe to pull out a bit tricky because you look too long at it and your eyes side starts going funny. Uh, we're almost back to the M6. Uh, the sun is setting, as you can see. Um, it's been a rather lovely day so far. So let's talk a bit about more more about this car. Um, I mentioned 
in the, um, uh, the the live video, but this isn't really a 323. Uh, imagine there's a 323 F in Europe and some other countries. Uh, in Japan, it was bag badged as the Lantis and um, was a larger car than the um, 323. The 323 typically is the Familia platform. Sorry, getting on a bit busy here in the rush hour. Um, so, um, the Familia was originally a rear wheel drive car, became front wheel drive in 1980. And um, B series, typically BD, BF, BG, um, your typical 323s. Um, like I say, this is a bit of a strange one, it, but it fits above the 323 range, maybe that's why we put an F on it. And it's closer to a ZDOS, ZDOS 6. BMW just accelerating on my inside. Where would you like me to go, sir? Oh, you're going over there, I see. More up. It's BMW drivers for you. So, yeah, I mean, it gets confusing with Japanese cars generally, as being the editor of a retro Japanese magazine. I mean, it just ties your head in knots trying to work out where the different families relate to each other when you discover that what you thought was a Nissan Bluebird is actually a Nissan Orster and the Bluebird was actually something entirely different. Um, yeah, it's a confusing old world. So, being based on the um, ZDOS um, meant you could have the 2 litre V6 option. Uh, obviously, this doesn't have that. But it's surprisingly perky. I, I mean, to be honest, I've not found myself wanting more power yet. I'm trying to work out if the Skoda was a very slow 1.3 or if this is a very lively 1.5. Accelerate strongly it has masses of torque, which I wasn't expecting. So we're doing 60, uh, two and a half thousand rev. If I put my foot down, I mean it's not like turbocharger acceleration, but it feels meaty. It feels, um, yeah, responsive. And uh, for a car that has not been very well looked after, it would seem, judging by the state of that completely split hose. Uh, oh, I'm in completely the wrong lane. Um, I don't think it's doing too badly. I've just got to try and get myself from the fourth lane to the first. See if we can find a way to do that. There we go, mission accomplished. Ooh, I've got the red face that can only mean I've been to OK Diner, the home of Neon. Um, but yeah, so far, everything pretty good. Um, not a lot to report, but obviously I can't really report an awful lot more because it's now very dark. So we shall continue the journey and hope we get home. I've just been trying to catch up with the many, many comments. Uh, well done to the people who correctly guessed that there was an intake leak. Um, still seems to be running all right, so we shall carry on home. Right, one more thing is sadly the windscreen wipers have very badly scratched this windscreen over the years be nice to fit a replacement. The headlamps aren't bad though, they're projector type ones, I think that might be the first car I've owned with projector type headlamps. And uh, I, I, I'm also aware I misspoke several times in the live stream, this is the problem, you can't edit out the mistakes in the live broadcast. Uh, apparently I said ZDOS 9 is what these cars share a platform with. No, it's the smaller six, obviously. The one that also had a two litre V6 engine. I mean, quite why you'd want the two litre V6. This seems to go well enough to me. There we are at 60. It, it's not a slow car. And um, yes, Southport is also not in Lancashire. It once was, but hasn't been for 40 years. So Hubner, cutting edge, um, correct with the facts and topical and all that nonsense or just wrong I think I might have been wrong about the badge as well I think I've got quite a lot of things wrong but nonetheless this car definitely was sold as the um, Astina in some markets and Lantis in others and in Colombia it was sold as the Allegro which makes me wonder if I can get some Allegro badges for it Anyway, I, I must continue on my way home. All is running well, she's sounding sweet as anything. Tell you what, this car is pretty 
proving to be a tidy handler. Even on this mix of budget tyres. Whoops, that's stuff moving around due to G force. Oh, this car is huge fun to drive. I keep looking at the speedo and being shocked at how quickly it'll go round a bend. But then Mazda bought us the MX-5, I suppose they know a thing or two about handling. Yeah, I mean really the difference between the Favourite and this car is immense. The Favourite in some ways reminds me of a 70s car, albeit a good 70s car. But um, yeah, this feels a lot more modern and a lot sharper. This isn't doing much for my pudding. Maybe I shouldn't have had one. But it had berries, so therefore it was one of my favourite day. don't have to work this engine hard to travel at very naughty speeds indeed. I say very naughty, we're doing 60 in a 60. But it feels naughty because of how well it goes around bends, because you basically don't slow down. Oh, there we are. We're home. That idle's a bit high again. And it's still high. Hmm, yeah, okay, that needs looking into. But nonetheless, we've made it. There is uh, Lee, the 2CV, and um, yeah, that's um, just over 12 hours since we left the house. I shall form some conclusions in the morning. But for now, it is time for bed. Oh, I had a horrible dream last night, but I got rid of my lovely Skoda and replaced it with a knackered Mazda. Ah! Not a dream. Or well, not a nightmare. Is it a nightmare? Hmm. Is it really as badly damaged down the near side as I thought? Ooh. Yes. Maybe we should look at the other side instead. Incidentally, I don't think I've ever owned a car where the wiper blades are quite so rusty. I'm amazed that the blades are holding up, to be honest. But, yeah. Oh. Something's just looked better in glorious daylight. That's green motoring right there. So, yes, this is my new car. A Mazda 323 1.5 GLX. Sorry, 323F. Um, we shall see how it develops, but um, yeah, that was it. I've managed to get home. That's battle number one. I suspect the next battle will be to see if we can get it an MOT. So I shall say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and I shall see you in a future video for more ridiculous adventures.